can a theorist really make progress? The answer is no. A theorist can't do anything, can't do crap by themselves sitting in a room. Because for a very important re reason, you may think it is the job of, a th of an experimental physicist like me or a theoretical physicist to prove something. Uh, but actually, f proof in physics is completely impossible. Any physical science is impossible. There's only two subjects you can prove something in. One is called logic or philosophy, and the other is math. Math can actually have a theorem, like one plus one equals two, mm -hmm. and it will take 200 pages to prove it from different you know, category theory, group theory, set theory. And you can prove it multiple ways. You could prove Pythagorean theorem in, I think, 300 different ways you can prove it. But you can't prove a theory of physics, right? If I say the um, evolution is true, all I have to do is find one counter, counter I'm not saying this exists, of Lamarckian genetic traits. And, and actually, some of it you know, was, was thought to be very plausible, say. Or that you, know, you find some type of creature that doesn't use DNA and only uses RNA or some triple, I don't know, I'm making it up. But, but the point is, one counterexample can falsify something that was previously believed to be true like Newtonian gravity, like Einsteinian gravity. We don't even think Einstein's the final word, right? There's no final word because there's no proof in physical science. There's only proof in a mathematical, abstract, abstruse sense, mm. as it is, say, in mathematics and, and in, in philosophy. So for physicists, it gives them great angst. Theoretical physicists know that not only is it not possible for their theory to be proven, it may not even be testable. And this is the problem with theories like that of people like Michio Kaku, Brian Greene, or... Edward Witten, string theory, or Jack. I can't look into Jack's theories without getting a haircut, a headache. <laughs> <laughs> he, but, sa he says, challenge any of these schmucks to debate the Salfati. They're all scared. Oh, yeah, right. You know, so I, no, no one will debate him. That's his yeah. problem. No, I'll, I'll quote what I, uh, what I was told uh, once uh, that uh, Richard Dawkins said when he was asked to challenge someone who doesn't believe in evolution. He says, I could see how that would be an outstanding addition to your CV. <laughs> but you can understand how it would be an absolutely horrendous one for mine, right? Right. Right, so right. Jack's uh, completely, you know, no, no one's going to debate him. No one's going to, because, actually, because of the They don't want to be associated with him? They don't want to be associated with him. They don't take him serious. I actually joke. I say, like, somebody comes up with it. Because, actually, Eric Weinstein's called me up a lot recently asking about, like, my thoughts on Grush. And, you know, I actually haven't done my due diligence on it. I've been so busy the last couple of weeks, but it's something I'm going to have time maybe even talk to Grush at some point. But um, but I always ask Eric or whoever I talk to or they have some new theory, I say, what's the Sarfati number? You know, like how far away from complete abject unfalsifiability, just like I cat there first, I came up with this and just the kind of grandiosity mm -hmm. that people like Jack will have. Mm -hmm. And there's many of them. I yeah, get emails I from bet. them every day. Um, you know, Professor Keating, you're wrong. Everybody's wrong. I'm right. Let me come on the pro uh, talk podcast. Um, let me let me write a paper with you. I'm not good in math. I mean, Jack's probably good in math, but uh, they'll say well, I'm not good in math. But if you help me out, we'll share the Nobel Prize. And you know, and for you know, I don't blame these people for having passion about these different phenomena. But look, if I asked you, you know, Daniel, I said to you, look. Which is more important? Let's say let's say Grush is or there there is something, and I don't know. I actually don't know which because I think you're you do an outstanding job. You don't really kind of tip your hand at what you truly believe. You're not dogmatic. You're kind of curious. You want to hear the answer. And you know, for me, if I asked you just point blank, I said, let's say Grush is right. What do you think is the technology that allowed these spacecraft to get? Here he's claiming, as far as I understand it, he hasn't seen. And you cor please correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't follow this nearly as close as you do. But he's claiming that there are people in the government, our U.S. government, that have covered up the landing of of spacecraft with bodies inside, with some type of biologics. He's called them mm -hmm. in, in congressional testimony. Um, um, I've had on Ryan Graves on my podcast, who's a, a former F-18 pilot. We've he's talked, been here too. Yeah. Yeah. And he's great. And he's a very sweet guy. And I believe, you know, he's earnest in his mission, what he's trying to accomplish. Um, and he hasn't said though, you know, he, he, he did never said that he saw these craft, these spheres and yes, the exactly. He said that he knows the pilots and they would not only see them, they'd see them every day, every deployment. Every, so, and Fravor claims he saw this Tic Tac. Let's just say they're all real. There's some kernel of truth. God, tells you here Danny boom they're true there's tic tacs there's crash saucers there's biologics there's cubes with spheres and spheres with cubes what if I asked you Danny what was the technology that was more important to those aliens to get here was it string theory or was it metallurgy what would you say it is what technology enabled it more like if you just had a guess 
was it something like string theory or was it something like metallurgy? I would say something like metallurgy. Yeah. I mean, it's much more practical, right? There's nothing about string theory necessarily that involves anything that's a necessary condition for those aliens to get here. And yet you have people like Jack and like others that you need this warp drive and you need this theory of physics and Eric's theory of geometric unity is wrong because this is a... Uh, to, at, to answer this question usually presupposes the fact that these distances are enormous, which is true. I mean, these distances are enormous, but the age of the universe is also quite enormous, right? So if you imagine um, that these craft have been traveling, if they exist, and I'm not saying I actually don't think they exist, right? you know, so, so uh, I'd rather, you know, kind of defend that. But I think to be an intellectual and to be honest, you have to say, look, let's give the other side steel man, the, your opponent's argument and see if that sharpens up your own. So from my perspective, when people result, as Dave Grush has, that these things are holograms and they travel at the, you know, faster than the speed of light and they can manipulate space time. I've heard him when he was on Joe Rogan speculating about this, tying in these loose notions of quantum mechanics and relativity and warp drives and, and all these other things. He's a physicist too, isn't he, Grush? No. No, I, think I thought he had a degree in physics. <clears throat> he might have a bachelor's degree or something. Right. That doesn't mean he's a physicist. Yeah, and he's not a pilot. I mean, right, he's not. Right, right. Um, and I don't think that those things necessarily like favor. Oh, well, you're doubting a U.S. Navy veteran. I'm like, he has more bigger balls than I do, but that doesn't mean he's like better observer and analytic when it comes to data analysis. He did an eyewitness thing. You know, probably most courts, you know, <laughs> eyewitness reports are replete with being completely erroneous, mis misinterpreted. You know, they have famous studies where there's like the Stanford studies, a gorilla dribbling a basketball, like between all these other people. And you're, you're just counting how many times somebody dribbles a basketball and a gorilla goes through. Nobody notices the gorilla. I mean, the, the fact that human beings are not considered the, as reliable as other forms of evidence in many situations leads me to say that like, yeah, I'm just as qualified. I'm not, again, I don't have the balls that David Fravor, Ryan Graves have, my friend Ariel Kleinerman, I've had on all these guys. I haven't had David Fravor. Uh, Alex Dietrich, I mean, I'm like, she has uh, big balls, whatever she has, big ovaries. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I don't have the courage. I didn't have the the physical, mental abilities to be a pilot at their level. I fly little Cessnas around. But um, okay, so I stipulate that. But th does that mean that you just trust whatever they say? I mean, are we in the stance? Are we going to take the stance that someone in the government is to be trusted? I mean, I, I always thought that the government is to be is to be suspicious of. All right, they right. covered up Roswell. They covered up all these things. Right. The Kennedy assassination. So you can't have it both ways. I mean, at some point you have to look and say, what do the data tell us right now? And I'm always surprised on my channel how many people just assume that I'm working for big astronomy or there's some like, you know, conspiracy that I'm a part of that like because I am skeptical of the existence. Oh, look, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm skeptical not only of the existence of alien technology, I'm fairly suspicious of the existence of alien life which is a prerequisite for alien intelligence and technology, right?